All right, here we are in step three of our process of uh, preparing our clips for distribution and stock sales. I've gone through my timeline. I've uh, done all of the color correction that I want to do to all 100 clips that I have on my timeline. We see them all here, all scrunched together, one clip right after another, and you might be wondering, well, what am I going to do next? What's step three? Well, let's open up our timeline a little bit. I like to have it open wide enough so that I can actually read the file names because we're going to use these as a reference as we create a list of exports in a kind of a batch, what we call a batch export uh, system. And uh, we want our new AVI files that are now color corrected to have the same identical name as our generic set of files so that we can always uh, uh, be able to reference them uh, in a database and, and know which file belongs to which. Easily find them. Good organizing. Okay, so here's our process. What we want to do is uh, send all of these to a batch export. And um, the easiest way to do this, I've kind of developed a little workflow that uh, makes this quite quick. Uh, make sure your timeline is selected and uh, then point to the first click on your timeline and hit the shift Z or Z key as the case may be depending on where you live and that will actually set an in and out point at the uh, for the whole clip all at once you don't have to go in and, and find the first frame and set the in point with the I key and go to the edge and find an and, and uh, you know back off on one and then hit the O key for setting your out point you just need to so point to your clip, select it, hit the Shift Z keyboard shortcut, and that should select it. If for some reason it doesn't select it on your computer, it means that somebody's been messing up with your keyboard shortcuts, changing them to something else. But you can go back to settings, user settings, and uh, find out uh, uh, where that, uh, the, you know, under the user interface, go to keyboard shortcut, find that. Uh, and change that back. I believe it's the set in and out on current clip. And right now it's set to uh, the Z key and the shift is on. But uh, if that shows us no assignment for you, well, you can set that up and assign it to any keyboard shortcut you want. Now that we have it selected, we can hit the F11 key and uh, making sure that the export between in and out is checked, we'll go and I'm going to export these to Grass Valley HQ for the first set of files. In the future, we may want to come back and open up this project again and select a different uh, export preset. And uh, that is actually the beauty of setting these up in a batch export. And you'll see what I mean in a few minutes. But for this first pass, I'm going to make myself a set of Grass Valley HQ AVI files that I can use in my own productions. That way, the next time I do a video on, on uh, the Dominican Republic, I know I have these file folders full of beautiful Grass Valley AVI files ready to go on my EDIUS timeline. I don't have to bring them in from different uh, hard drives that I have on my shelves all over the place. I've now got them all organized, all Grass Valley AVI is ready to go. In setting up this batch export, what we want to do, rather than hit the export key or simply hit the enter key, what we want to do is hit the add to batch list. Now we want to send these to a, uh, a separate file folder than the file folder that we use to send our generic AVI set. And so I've created a file folder here called, simply call it batch process. You could call it anything you want. And then remember we want to use the same file names that we used in our generic set of files. So W. And uh, what I'll do before I save that, I'll do a copy of that, add that to my clipboard to make it just a little easier as we create this batch list. So uh, then I'll hit save. And you might think that, huh, nothing happened. But actually it has. Uh, because we're not actually exporting at this point, we're only saving to a batch list you wouldn't expect to see the normal progress bar there uh, that uh, you would normally see when you're exporting. Just to confirm that something has happened, let's go up to File, go down to Export, 
and choose the batch export. And uh, here it is showing up here. It's the first in a long list of files that we're going to create. Uh, and uh, so indeed something did happen. Let's just close out of this and go after our next clip. Now, uh, Edius uh, likes you to point to the timeline once. Make sure the timeline, uh, make sure you see this green border all the way around. And that lets you know that the timeline is selected. Uh, in Edius terms, that's saying that we have put the focus to the timeline. If we were to go over to our bin and we see it turns green, has a nice green border around it, then we know our focus is over in the bin area. But we want to make sure our focus is on the timeline and then we can select the clip and use our sh keyboard shortcut, can our shift Z and hit F11. Edius uh, remembers the last uh, preset that we use so we don't have to select that each time. It remembers our in and out point. All we need to do is remember to hit the add to batch list. Now if you've developed a habit of just exporting every time, it might take you <laughs> a little bit to retrain your brain that every time you open this up, what you want to do now is add to batch list. Now because I've got uh, the file number on a clipboard, I can just hit control V and simply change the last character. We'll make it one, hit save, and point to our timeline again, hit our shift Z, oh, first of all point to the clip, shift Z, F11, add to batch list, hit uh, control V, and make that a two. And if you're ever wondering where you're at, you can always look down and verify the file name, make sure that you've got it the same. And uh, you can see that you can develop a rhythm here and uh, make this a fairly quick process. Now, if you ever uh, reach a point and, and you're kind of got a brain freeze and you're wondering, did I save this one or not? Um, well, what you can always do, you know, let's say you come back from a coffee break and you look and you see it's highlighted, but you can't remember if you saved it or not. Well, remember, you can always go up to File and go down to Export, go to the Batch Export and see and look and what was the last one you saved. And as we look at it, we see that, yes, we did save that 204. So we'll hit Close and uh, keep going on down the timeline. Okay, so you get the idea of uh, how this works. We uh, can probably put you on pause. I'll go through the rest of the timeline. And once I've got the batch export list complete, I'll show you uh, how we actually do the export. All right, uh, we've just finished up our last clip and uh, sent it to the batch export. We can go take a look at our list, export, batch export, and here's our list of 100 clips ready to export to AVI. Now, uh, before we do that, I uh, just want to point out a couple of things that's important to understand about what we've just done. This export list that we just saw is based on the timeline as it is right now. If someone should come along and add another clip to the beginning and bump all of these clips down the timeline, uh, it would throw your batch export all out of whack. You'd still get exported files but they wouldn't be defined with the in and outs as they are right now because everything's been pushed down the line. It's these in and outs that you've just done uh, as they coordinate with the timeline uh, information at the top of the screen. So if these get bumped at all, everything is going to get thrown out of whack. And so if you want to be very cautious about this, you could uh, actually do a track lock so that they don't get bumped by mistake. And that way you'll always have good in and outs and never have to worry about that. Now, a couple of other things to note. Even though we've sent uh, this information uh, to the batch export list, that doesn't mean that you can't still make changes. Uh, you could go in, for example, and lower your audio uh, a little. Um, if you wanted to, you could unlock your track and being careful not to bump anything down the timeline, you could go in and uh, make some adjustments to the color correction that you did last time. 
look at that and say, oh, you know, maybe that's just a little saturated. Let's bring the saturation down on that a little bit. And so, you know, you still, even though you've done your export list, you can still go in and make changes to either the image or the audio. And the next time you export, those changes will be reflected. So with that in mind, let's do our first export. Go to our export uh, list again. And everything's ready to go. All we have to do is hit the export button. And Edis will take a look at the whole 100 definitions that you've made here. And uh, it will let you know if you've got a problem. Uh, it'll give you a little error message here. This often happens. In fact, I don't think I've ever set one of these up where I haven't made some mistake along the way in a course of 100 clips. Your eyes get cross-eyed a little bit, and usually what happens is you end up putting a file name in twice, or there's some other type of overlap problem. So let's hit No, and uh, Edius is going to highlight the problems. So we can go up and find a problem down. This just looks like we've got one little problem here. And we'll take a look, and we'll see that we've got uh, two files that uh, end in 12, but no 13. And uh, so let's uh, go over here and make sure that they're actually uh, two different in and outs. We see that the timeline for the out here, the next uh, file starts with the next frame on the timeline. And so it looks like uh, we're pretty safe just to change the file name here. And you can do that by going to the little icon here and uh, simply changing this file name and hit save again. So having done that, I think we've taken care of our problem. Let's try again. Hit export. And it seems to like that, and it started the export. So this is a good time to take a break, uh, grab a coffee. Or if it's a busy day, you can slide over to another computer and start working on that while this does its thing over here. And uh, in our next tutorial, it'll all kind of come together. We'll show you the big benefit of taking the extra time to follow these steps and set up these batch export lists.